Apple intelligence, the AI for the rest of us is here. Kinda. Now, if you are lucky to either live in the US or happy to have your device set to US English, then you should now have access to the new Apple intelligence, or at least in its current beta form. This is Apple's biggest announcement of the entire year with the release of iOS 18.1. And seemingly they aren't putting any real focus into their hardware this year. The iPhone 16, the iPad mini, even devices like the Apple Watch and AirPods Max. Everything is basically getting the bare minimum needed with Apple intelligence being like the, the big flagship new feature of the year. So today I wanna to look at what Apple intelligence is currently capable of because you know whilst they are late to the game, I do think Apple intelligence has the, the potential, like key word there, potential, the potential to be one of the best implementations of AI that we've currently seen inside of a phone. Now the first feature we have are the new writing tools, which can be accessed pretty much anywhere on an iPhone. Now if you are writing out a new message, you can write out a reply and then tap the new edit button, which has the little Apple intelligence circle logo thing. In notes, it just appears right there above the keyboards. And then in other apps, you can basically tap the arrow key here above the keyboard to slide over the controls and tap Apple intelligence. So there are a few different ways to find it, but you just need to look for that new shiny like Apple circular intelligence logo. Now when you do, it will give you some options here. You can proofread, which will just correct any technical issues with what you've written, things like spelling, grammar, punctuation, that sort of stuff. You can rewrite it and Apple intelligence will just go away and do its thing without asking anything. You can also choose to rewrite it in a friendly or professional or concise manner. And there are also some shortcuts down the bottom to move what you've written into a table, maybe a list, the key points or a shorter summary. Siri is one of the biggest upgrades this year though. Now with a new glowing animation, which goes around the edge of your screen, you trigger it by just saying Siri. You don't have to say like the Hey Siri thing anymore. Or you can double tap the bottom of your phone now to bring up a keyboard to type your response to Siri instead of using your voice. Now when using Siri with your voice, it actually has been updated so you can use like much, much richer language. So you don't have to, you're like, you know, when, when people know they're talking to AI, they change their responses to be like more robotic. Hello and welcome to the flatline. Where do you require your one bedroom flat? Brighton, Brighton. You require a one bedroom house in Bedford. But you can now say things like Set an alarm for, oh wait, no, uh, set a timer for 10 minutes. Actually, make that five. Now the one I've been most impressed with though is when adding calendar appointments. I'm getting a tattoo tomorrow at 2 p.m. Can you add it to my calendar, please? Oh, actually, sorry, it's not tomorrow. It's next Monday at 2 p.m. It has more contextual awareness and memory so you can ask it one question and then a follow-up question or you know instruction without having to remind it what you were talking about. Now over in mail, there's a new summarize button if you ever receive a really long email and just want a quick overview. Plus in the preview now, you'll see Apple intelligence getting to work with a summary of that email instead of the usual like first few lines of an email. Now this only seems to work for emails that are long enough to summarize. Like I get a few notification emails come through that don't get a summary because they're not really long enough to like, summarize. Just in case you're wondering why you aren't seeing the little kind of summary icon next to some of your emails. There is also a toggle switch at the top now to show the high priority emails first. Again, Apple intelligence will try and identify emails which are you know, perhaps time sensitive and bring them to the top of your inbox for you to reply to first. Now next up we have smart replies which you can get in mail and messages. Although this doesn't seem to extend to third party apps or at least not any of the apps that I'm using yet. I imagine that will kind of come with time. And Smart Replies will use AI to like pre-write a few suggested responses to those messages or to those emails that you've received. So generally speaking, with one tap, you'll have a reply that's you know, mostly written that you can just send. Now, those of you who have followed my channel for a while know that I have this like obsession with anything magnetic when it comes to like phone cases and accessories. And Moft, who kindly agreed to sponsor this video, have just launched their latest product, which combines a tripod and a wallet, which I recently took with me to Berlin, and it is really, really nice. Like, it's made from this really soft Movas material, which is a really nice feel in the hands. They have matching cases with a proper cutout for the new camera control button, and even an invisible clear case version. And they all attach so nicely to the tripod wallet, which combines a, like a wallet, a stand, and a tripod all in one. And for someone who is traveling quite a lot recently, having all sorts of these like floating modes, which you can use with more than 30 angles in three different modes, you can literally use it to vlog if that's you know, something you do, along with being able to have up to two cards in here to pay contactlessly without needing to remove anything. 
and the rest of the time it folds away to be super slim and compact. Now I've actually found it really convenient whilst working at my desk, whilst I'm on the go and traveling away, being able to just prop my phone up to keep an eye on the notifications or even FaceTime my wife and kids without you know needing to physically hold the phone. So if you are interested in either the case or the tripod wallets, I'll have them linked down below in the description. Then we have some updates to photos where you can create a memory movie, they're calling it, by asking it to do something like you know, Christmas with family and friends or cars over the last five years with some rock music. And it will go through your library, pick photos, pick out videos, and put together even a suitable like music track, which you can also prompt it to do. And you can really ask it to do anything here. Like if you want to include specific memories or moments or people, then that also works too. And that also leads on into generally searching your library as well. Like if you want to find all photos of your cat from 2023 or me playing drums. But just be aware that these searches can take time to complete. Like I've been running the uh, the beta, beta, beta version of Apple Intelligence for a while now. And it's been at least a week since I've installed the last update. And it still tells me that it's not showing all of the results yet because it needs time to, you know, index and analyze my library. So just be aware of that. And then one more for images. We've seen this before on the Pixels and other Android devices, but being able to clean up your photos and images by just like scribbling on people or scribbling on objects, and they'll be then removed from the photo, which is actually pretty impressive. A very cool feature that I'm actually glad has made its way into the iPhone this year with the latest iOS 18 update is the ability to record, summarize, and transcribe audio, be it on phone calls or even inside apps like Notes. So when on the call, you just tap this new button on the top left and start recording. It will play like a short message to let them know that they've been recorded. Although, if you do this whilst like navigating through one of those, you know, automatic menu systems, the caller won't hear it because the automatic menu system will hear it. And now you can kind of record the entire conversation both sides without them knowing about it. In notes, you can insert a new voice recording, which can also then be transcribed and summarized too. Now, one of the best features, in my opinion though, are these summarized notifications. Like, rather than having to deal with this, you know, huge, huge list of notifications from the same app, now you can just see a very high level summary of everything from that same stack and then decide if you want to tap to see more and like drill down and read the individual notifications or just swipe away the whole stack because it's not important. And this then flows down a little bit further too. Now, one of the ones that I haven't seen many people talk about is a setting under focus mode that then uses AI to intelligently allow through certain notifications only if it thinks they're important. Now, what's classed as important, of course, is very important. Now, from my experience, it's been mostly time sensitive things like a, a message from someone saying if you're free to talk now or a delivery app saying the delivery will be arriving soon, like those sorts of things. But it has been a really nice way to just, you know, clean up your notifications whilst you are in a focus mode, such as, you know, at work, where you just don't want to be spammed by all the general day-to-day -day notifications. But there are still a lot of features to come, ones that are still missing from this release of Apple Intelligence. There's no cross app contextual awareness with being able to say, you know, add this information to this person's contact card or send the email I just drafted to Hudson. You can't say, make this photo pop. It just seems to take a screenshot at the moment. And things like enhance this photo, then just think you wanna switch the phone off. There's no chat GPT integration, no generative images from a sketch or, or gen emojis if people wanna use those. And that full like image playground thing that was teased Apple intelligence just really has a long way to go still. And in terms of like my real world experience, like navigation for me is horrendous, like 99% of the time. Now, of course, big caveat here. I'm in the UK with a phone set to US English running beta software. We say beta over here, not beta, but Blame me in the comments if you want. Um, so that's a big caveat. But I cannot use Siri in my car to reliably navigate anywhere if I actually know the place name. Navigate to Waterlooville Air Rifle Club. Navigate to Coldy's Mansion. Navigate to Cold East Mansion. Now, if I don't know the name, then it's far more accurate, like navigate to the nearest Domino's Pizza. That works. And I've also found that for many voice commands in my car, it just gives me a standard response of, well, I can't do that whilst you're driving. But where it fails much of the time, it also wins fairly big too. Three, send Hudson a WhatsApp message to tell him I'm on my way. Send it to Hudson Warren. I'm on my way. Cool. 
that works. Compared to when I try this from my S24 Ultra. Google, send Hudson a message on WhatsApp saying, I'm on my way. Who do you want a message? Cancel. All right. Google, send Hudson a message on WhatsApp saying, I'm on my way. Who do you want a message? Hudson. Who do you want a message? Hudson. It knows it. It, it spells your name properly. And it still doesn't send it. Who do you want a message? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's enough. <laughs> because Google Gemini, even though it's available, doesn't work in the car. And this is where Apple intelligence strengths seem to be at the moment. Like sending messages, managing your calendar, adding reminders and tasks, like all of these things seem to be much easier and quicker and way more natural with this new update. But like I said, a lot of missing features still. And I actually still feel that many others might be way ahead of where Apple are. Google, I'm going to CES in 2025. Find me flights from London to Las Vegas around then with a three day return round trip. Uh, no early morning flights and make sure they are all direct flights. I found a few round trip flights from London to Las Vegas departing on January 23rd. And, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. Actually, maybe let me know down in the comments down below. Do you want to see a similar video with Google Gemini just to see what you can do with that? And maybe you can compare it to or maybe I can compare it to Apple Intelligence. So yeah, they definitely have some catching up to do. But if you are watching this video with a brand new iPhone 16 and want to get the most from the Dynamic Islands, then check out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.